philosophy. What is it? Philosophy is the P in PhD. So someone with a PhD in marriage and family counseling has a philosophical doctorate in blah, 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 blah. A long time ago, like 500 years BC, there was no way of doing science. Science was called philosophy. Now what is science? It's when you try to understand something and you try to test your hypotheses and you try to argue that something is the case by using evidence, by using reasoning. Enough reasoning and evidence seeking arguments and conversations about what is physics turned into its own branch called physics. But before it was something like the philosophy of physical things. The philosophy of the mind is now called psychology. But we still have the field called philosophy. Philosophy is the science of the sciences. Philos and Sophia together make the love of wisdom. Philosophy is when you are trying to seek the truth, the knowledge, the, the wisdom about some specific topic. So that's why um, we call it the science of the sciences. It is a science itself. It is a way of thinking, a methodological way of thinking. It's when you are trying to understand something and you're asking all of these questions and you're questioning all of the answers to get to the bottom of it. Well, what could be philosophical? Almost any topic that you can think of is going to be, according to somebody, a matter of philosophical conversation. So we've got metaphysics. Metaphysics is when you're studying the nature of things. What exists and what are the differences between the things that exist? What makes up this universe? Meta meaning going beyond something. And then physics telling you that we're studying the empirical stuff. Metaphysics is the study of what is not merely taking up space. Philosophy of science is when you're asking questions like, what is evidence? Like, I want to give evidence that something's true. I want to test my hypothesis. But what even counts as evidence? And how much evidence do you need? Epistemology is when you're asking philosophical questions about knowledge. What can we know? What is beyond the scope of what is knowable? What's the difference between speculating and believing and judging and accepting and knowing that something is the case? Aesthetics is all about the value of beauty. What is beautiful? Is beauty in the eye of the beholder? Is there something that is beautiful whether you agree or not? Logic is the study of reasoning and argumentation. What counts as a good reason? And what's a good argument versus a bad argument? Philosophy of religion is all about testing whether a religion is internally consistent, whether it makes sense. Ethics is the study of right and wrong and where right and wrong comes from. Like, what is the source of morality? And how can an act be bad? What does it even mean for an action to be bad? All of these are subfields within philosophy. And these are not even all of them. For example, we haven't even talked about political philosophy when we're asking questions about democracy and government and totalitarian uh, ways of thinking. Now, I'm going to just give you some examples within some of those fields so that you get an idea of what you would be studying if you were to pick one of those subfields. Metaphysics. What is the nature of reality? Like one guy, Thales, had this whole philosophy about how everything is actually just water. And then there's this other guy, Heraclitus, he had this theory that everything is actually just fire. I mean, like, take our version of that. Everything is carbon. We live in a carbon-based planet, and everything is made up of atoms and molecules. So there were other people thousands of years ago that had other ideas about what nature was made up of. Physicalism is a theory that says that everything that exists is physical, corporeal, has a body, takes up space, has a mass. Physicalism is this idea that things that are not physical don't actually exist. Fundamentally, reality is physical. So if you look up Thomas Nagel's uh, book or essay, then you'll see that he is trying to argue that physicalism is false. 
he's got this paper called what is it like to be a bat and what he's trying to do is show you that you'll never know what it is like to be a bat because there is some kind of subjective character of experience something it is like to be the kind of thing that doesn't have visual perception but can navigate its way around things through things like echo location and to use sonar and shrieking and to fly so if physicalism is true then we should be able to explain your conscious experience of your world in physical terms and Thomas Nagel argues we can't there's something it is like to be you that is not explainable in terms of measurable mass physical body stuff and so physicalism is wrong he argues doing philosophy in ethics you're studying what is good to do what is righteous what is evil to do what is bad what is unethical and questions like that like what's the source of morality some people say it's god some people say it's not god here is an example of a kind of thing you would encounter if you're studying ethics it's called the trolley problem and it's originally given up to us by philippa foot so imagine that there's a trolley on these tracks and if no one does anything there's five people on the tracks who will be run over by the train so five people are going to die and you are next to this lever next to this switch operating system and if you pull the lever then the train changes the tracks that it's going down and so rather than the five people being killed just one person will be killed so you can imagine there's this train and it can go this way and five people will die. You can pull the lever and then the train will go this way and only one person would die. But here's the difference. Here, you would be letting five people die. Here, one person will die rather than five people dying, but now you killed someone. So the question with the trolley problem is something like this. Is it ethical to kill one person to avoid letting five people die and it's a philosophical question it's not quite clear what to do but we can talk about philosophy of religion questions like whether some religion that we assume people believe in is internally coherent does it make sense for those people to believe that thing like here is a kind of situation you would encounter and it's by J.L. Schellenberg called divine hiddenness uh, if you're a Christian, a Jew, or a Muslim, you believe in this creationist story in this book called Genesis. You believe that an all-good, all-loving, all-powerful God who wants a relationship with you, who wants you to come back to paradise to be with him, created the world and created you. Well, how is that true if we have no physical evidence? Of God the problem of divine hiddenness is something like this if an all-good all-powerful all-loving God wanted a relationship with you wouldn't he make himself and his existence more obvious it's a problem that God is hidden from us and if you open up your Quran or your Torah or your Bible you will see quotes in there about how oh God you're so hidden from us. Why have you forsaken me? And so we might study things like that, but totally different subfield in philosophy, epistemology. Well, here we're wondering, what is knowledge? What's the difference between knowing something and merely thinking that you know, but being wrong, believing or judging or speculating? You might encounter Gettier cases if you study epistemology. Here you get a case like there's this sheep in this large field and you say hey there's a sheep in the field but why do you say that there's a sheep in the field it's not because there is one you see this rock in the field and the rock is sheep shaped there is a rock that looks like a sheep in the field and you see the rock and you say there's a sheep in the field now you're right there is a sheep in the field but the reason why you think there's a sheep in the field is because you're mistaken about the rock that looks like a sheep. So do you know that there is a sheep in the field? You're right. You've got the truth somehow. You've got reasons for thinking what you think, but your reasons are not the cause 
and there's just something weird going on there. How can you explain it? I'm not sure. That's the kind of thing that you'd be studying in epistemology, which is another subfield in philosophy, and that's from a paper by Edmund Gettier. So philosophy has lots of subfields that ask different kinds of questions, but the idea of philosophy is that you've got some concept that you're studying, and you're asking all of these questions, trying to get to the truth of the matter. Philosophy is the love of the truth of the matter. Now, if you want to find out all the different philosophical concepts that you can investigate, a great resource, like maybe you already have something you want to investigate, is to go to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. There, it is an encyclopedia, but the excerpts are not this wrong. These are not definitions. You get something like 20 to 30 page essays explaining the history of a problem, history of examples, possible answers that people have given to whatever you're trying to research. So a great resource is the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy that has entries on all sorts of subfields.